This is what cooking for 10,000 people looks like. This kitchen, which is boiling hot and a hive of activity, is part of an operation organized by a Catholic charity called the, the Jesuit Refugee Services. It's given to some of the neediest people here in government-controlled West Aleppo, but it's quite clear that the needs here in the West are nothing like as serious in the rebel-held sector in the East. What they'll do is put all this into containers and take it out to feeding centers. Over on the East side, the other side of the front line, prices, food prices are 300% higher. That's because of a deliberate siege by the government putting pressure on the population and on the rebel fighting groups. The East is the side that really needs the humanitarian aid. If the ceasefire can't deliver that, I think it's in real trouble. It's one of the major reasons why rebels who don't like the agreement much have adhered to it, I think, is the fact that some humanitarian aid might come in. If that doesn't happen, they might say, what is the point of continuing with all of this? Now the UN charities, NGOs, would like to set up similar operations to this on the other side of the front line in rebel-held East Aleppo, but that's easier said than done because the reason why they are so short of food over there at the moment is because of a deliberate tactic used by the Syrian government. They have besieged the area and they have deliberately squeezed the population to put pressure on the people and on the armed rebel groups who are there. And it's a tactic that's, it's an ancient tactic and it's one that works. Elsewhere in Syria, groups of rebels have surrendered after years of all of that. And that's, I think, what they've been trying to do in East Aleppo. So getting humanitarian aid in is not just a question of needs. It's a question of politics as well.